Hello there. Welcome, everybody. Good morning. It is so nice to see you. Um, welcome to today's live lesson. Um, today, very, very interesting. We're talking about education and learning, giving you the vocabulary, the I idioms, some listening practice, everything you need to talk confidently on this topic. Let's begin with a little bit of this. Hello, good morning, everybody. It is so nice to see you. Welcome to today's lesson. Um, apologies, it's a minute late, but we're ready to go. Today's lesson is all about this, right? We're going to look at education, not only the ABC, but we'll go into a bit more detail um, on things like, well, schools, learning, technology, all of that kind of stuff. And I think you're going to enjoy today's lesson. Great to see you. Let's see who is in the house. Everybody's confused about the time because I was late, I think. <laughs> uh, who's here? We've got uh, Anna. Welcome. Got in the, got the right time. Tan from Vietnam. Lovely to see you here. Hassan from Sudan. Brilliant. Nice to see you, Hassan. Um, Giovanna from Sydney. Great. And we've got Abdul all the way from Bangladesh. Nice to see you here as well. Um, and Fatika all the way from Kazakhstan. People from all over the world. <laughs> Wake up, Keith. Listen, I'm awake, cheeky. <laughs> Namaste, Radhika. Lovely to see you. Um, buongiorno, Christine. Lovely to see you from Italy as well. And Daniel from Romania. So listen, we've got people from all over the world. Chamos, thank you for your greetings. Um, Feliz Semana Santa. Happy Easter. Here in Spain, um, we as a family are celebrating uh, Easter, Semana Santa. We're going to go traveling um, around Spain. We're going to go round towards Valladolid to Madrid, to Segovia, and visit a few different places. So um, if you are celebrating Easter, happy Easter. <laughs> Good. So listen, if um, it's your first time here today, welcome. Our lesson today lasts about an hour and a half, more or less. Um, and what's going to happen? Well, let me show you. Let me tell you what's... I'll talk you through what we're going to do in today's lesson. If I can get rid of this, <laughs> too many things. Da -da. Education, right? Come over here. Don't want to put that on my head. Education. Um, we're going to talk about education, indeed. And we're going to look at the vocabulary around schools and teachers, right? What kind of vocabulary do we need to talk about these? And I don't mean just pencil, ruler and apple. We'll be looking at more complex stuff. Um, then we're going to look at the topic of learning. How do we learn? And what does that mean for you as an English learner, right? I think that's going to be quite interesting. Um, after that, we'll be doing this. <laughs> throw, <laughs> throw the computer out the window. Sometimes, do you feel like that, right? You want to just throw the computer out. It's so annoying. Technology and education, right? How does it impact us? We're going to discuss that a little bit. I will be giving you a part two model answer um, on this topic, and we'll be analysing that a little bit. And then finally, we'll be coming to uh, Kahoot, which if you don't know, Kahoot is a game. It's a game that we play at the end of the lesson to check if you've been sleeping. <laughs> Please don't sleep. I just ask a few questions and it's a quiz to test what you've learned today, right? Just a bit of fun at the end. So that doo -doo, is, hello, black and white. That is what we've got in store today. Okay, let's put the colour back on. Come on. Technology, 21st century. So welcome all of you. It's great to see you all here. Um, we've got people, again, all over the world. We've got Lakshika from Sri Lanka. Um, we've got, thank you, Saber, for your greetings. Imrul from Bangladesh. 
Great. Um, quite a few from Sri Lanka. Oh boy, as well. Nice to see you here. <clears throat> um, good. Etka, nice. Thanks for sharing your message. Keith, I've been following your channel for six months, have cleared my IELTS, have gone through your website and most of your PDFs. That's a lot of work, um, Etka. Got 7.5. Well done. Thank you. Oh, big, big pleasure. Thanks for sharing. So pleased that... Let's, do, let's give you a, a horn. <laughs> So pleased. Well done, Hector. That's really great. Had given in the UK. That's brilliant. Very, very nice to hear that. Thank you for sharing. Um, I also actually got a message the other day. Um, one of the students who was on my fluency course, the Fluent Grammar course, if you go to the website um, that Keith, it's called the Keith Speaking Academy. If you're on YouTube, you may not know, but I have a website called Keith Speaking Academy, blah, 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 dot com as well as a Facebook page. On there, you can find online courses. And one of them is the um, fluency course. And I got this message uh, from Paul, who said, I finished your fluency course already. It's superb. Great. Listen, thank you for letting me know. It's a big, big motivator for me as well to know about that. Okay. Lovely. So yeah, go and check out. You can go and check out on the um, on the website, if you don't know the website, Key Speaking Academy, right? Go and have a look. Um, you can see it. You'll find, well, you can download the free book, The Common Mistakes in IELTS Speaking. You can get all those free PDFs that Ekta talked about. You can download from the latest live lessons. But also, I mean, this is just mad, but you get all this free stuff here. Or different topics, free lessons for each um, of the common topics down here. But you can also find out about the test and check out the online courses. Um, if you want a more systematic study, um, going into real depth, check out the gold course. It's brilliant. Um, I can't say that, can I? <laughs> Come on, Keith, you can't blow your own trumpet. You can't say it's brilliant. Go and check out the gold course. It's really interesting. There you go. That's better. Um, and then the Fluent Grammar course was the one um, that I just mentioned there that is also very nice. A big focus on grammar and getting you speaking correct grammar with the right pronunciation, kind of automating it. Anyway, go and check it all out. Lovely. So let's get into our lesson today, right? Um, if you've just arrived, we're going to be looking today at the topic of um, education looking at various things. We're going to kick off, as I always do, we're going to kick off with this. Just give me a moment to get my ducks in a row. <laughs> Great. Um, I've got, I'm going to test you, right? I'm going to give you a sentence and I want you to fill the gap with one or two words, right? One or two words. Fill the gap. You ready? Let's do it. Let's uh, let's dive straight in. Here we go. IELTS speaking vocabulary. I'll take that off for a moment. Next week, I'm going to blank the IELTS test. I'm going to blank the IELTS test. What do you think is the missing word or words? One or two words, right? Da, da, da. Let me move this over here. I'm going to put this on. <laughs> I'm going to put this on the screen as well. Let's see. Here we go. These are your comments, by the way. I'm using Streamer Live. Pretty, pretty cool software. Thanks to the guys at Streamer Live. And if you're a teacher, go and check it out. Um, Streamerlive.com. So all of your answers are coming up here, right? I'm going to, next week, you can see at the top, next week I'm going to blank the IELTS test. Take seems quite popular. Pass, pass. Wow, there's quite, how many count? Nine. There's a few confident people, right? <laughs> if you say I'm going to pass the IELTS test, it means I'm going to succeed. That means you're very, very confident. Well, very confident. Very interesting. Let's see what else we've got. Um, we've got appear. 
examine, attend, seat. I think you mean sit. J give. Wow. If you're giving the test, <laughs> that's interesting. Give means that you're the examiner. Have, I, have, we got, have we got some examiners in this session? That's a bit strange. Um, if you're giving IELTS, you're the teacher or the examiner, right? Hmm. <laughs> Take is clear the, the biggest one. Write. Wow, if you're going to write the IELTS test, that means you're not only the examiner. If you're writing the test, it means you're working for Cambridge English and you are actually making or creating the test. So I don't think many of you are writing the test. It's a very specialist skill. <laughs> Crack. Yeah, why not? Crack the IELTS test. Absolutely. Um, bump. I'm not sure about that. Attain. Mm, I'm not sure. Take. Somebody wrote take. Do. Smash is a good one. Absolutely. You're going to smash the test. Okay. You're going to Uzbekistan the test. <laughs> it's picking up all your comments, right? Oh, uh, dear. Okay. Excellent. Some nice, nice answers. So take seems to be the big one. Give. No, I'm going to give the test. You see, give. You don't give the test. Um, the examiner gives the test. So be careful with that one, right? Let's come back in here. Next week, I'm going to... So you could say sit. Somebody had seat, but it's sit. Not seat, but sit. Sit the test. Let me just make this a little bit clearer for you. Uh, sit the test. You could say take. Absolutely. Give is, is the examiner gives the test, right? The examiner gives the test. Um, Cambridge English write the test. So you're probably not giving or writing the test. Um, to pass is to succeed. So possibly you could say pass. If you're very, very confident, yes, I'm going to pass. Positive thinking, I'm going to pass the test. Sit, take. If you're not so positive, you might say fail. <laughs> I'm going to fail the test. Oh, dear. Let's hope, let's hope not. Um, we've got, how about planning to take? Planning to take three words. Grammatically, yes. But it's three words. Yes. OK. Have. I'm going to have the IELTS test. Oh, if you're talking about I'm going to have the IELTS test. Yes, you could say that. Yes. As in it's part of your plan. Part of your plan. Then yes. Um, sit, take and crack. Crack again. Yeah. Pass. I'm going to crack. You could say crack, meaning you're going to pass, right? I'm going to get the IELTS test. Mm, not really. Not get. No. Attend from Eileen. Yeah, absolutely. Attend is a good one. Like it. Excellent. Good. Um, first time here. Great. Abdul Razak, nice to see you all the way from Nigeria. Welcome. Lovely to see you here. We've got all of these then, right? All of these are good. These are probably the main ones, I think. Just take him, just going to have a quick look back. What else has come up? Torture, somebody wrote. <laughs> Sit, take, write, smash. Okay. I like torture. <laughs> I'm going to torture. No, you mean the test is going to torture you, right? Very funny. Okay. Excellent. All of those are nice. Um, let me turn this off for a moment. Good. Easier said than done, right? How do you turn it off? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Stop, 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 stop. Right. Has that stopped it? No, that's just start at the clock. There's the stop button. <laughs> I, know, I need to get my uh, get this sorted out, don't I? Okay. Got the next one. Okay, that's the first question. Here is the next question. At school, you will get into trouble if you don't blank the rules. Okay, 
at school, you will get into trouble if you don't blank the rules. What do you think the missing word or two, wor two words could be? What do you think? I'm going to, again, let me show, take you to the website and we're going to start this interaction. Obey. Nice. Follow. Submit. Submit to. That's good. Follow is good. Abide by. Excellent. Excellent. Who wrote that? Counter four. Good. Respect. Nice. Nice. No is possible. Absolutely. Great. Follow is definitely the biggest. All of these are looking good. Agree, agree to, maybe. Agree to. <clears throat> okay. Anything else? Stick. Stick to. Nice. Very, very nice. Like it. Respect. Break up not break up. Okay, I'm going to come back to this, but let's have a look together then. Let's have a look in the in the actual sheet here. What you've put, again, let me make it a little bit clearer. Mm. You will get into trouble if you don't follow is the most popular, and I totally agree. Follow. Uh, respect is nice. Obey. 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 <laughs> If you don't obey the rules, um, stick to, right? You need both of them. We've got stick to the rules. Or this was nice. I really like this. Abide by. If you don't abide by the rules. Excellent. Um, what else was there? No, possibly. No. Um, learn is possible. Understand. Yeah. So all of those, no, understand, all of those are possible as well. Uh, keep up. It, no, not keep up, but keep to, right? Um, yeah, keep to. Let me add that one as well. Stick to, keep to. Accept is possible, Piotr, yep. Yeah. Um, adhere, to, if you don't adhere to the rules. If you don't adhere to the rules, yes. It sounds a bit formal, but yes. Uh, we manner, abide by or obey. Excellent. Good. Any others? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Louis, I'm a big, 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 huge fan. Love it. Thank you very much. Agree. If you don't agree, uh, you, you will get into trouble if you don't agree with the rules. Yes, but agree with, we would say. Agree with, yes. Follow, etc. Yes, great. Great, excellent. iMovie trailers, thanks for your message. I love that. Thank you very much. So all of these are good, right? Follow, respect. Let's put all of those in black. Um, and just have a quick look back on the uh, original website. Pay attention to, could be. Keep to. I'm going to, can I change this one? Da, da, da. Can't change it. I can bin it, but I can't change it. Not to worry. Okay. Pay attention to. Excellent. Good. All of those. No, well, not all of those. The ones that we've mentioned. All of them here, right, are good. Okay. Well done. Very, very nice. I'm going to move th through, move on now. Let's look at IELTS speaking schools. So we're going to move on to the the kind of the next bit. OK, so we mentioned at the start, I said what we're going to do. We're talking about education. I'm going to go straight in next and look at um, vocabulary, right? Looking at schools, different aspects of schools and teachers in particular um, to look at the kind of vocabulary that we may want to talk about. OK, so. Curriculum is the first word. Curriculum refers to the subjects or the lessons in a course. So when you have a, a course, normally you have a curriculum, which is the content. It's the things you're going to study. 
Um, curriculum comes from the Latin word. Uh, the plural is curricula. Curricula is also the noun. That's the plural. And you probably know this word, or you may recognize it from curriculum vitae, curricula vitae, or curriculum vitae, when you're applying for a job. In America, they say resume. In English, we say curriculum vitae. That is the content of your life and your skill set, right? Similar idea. But in schools, we talk about the curriculum. Um, here's a question. What do we call those classes we do after school? And it's something to do with these words. Any idea? See if anybody knows. Uh, Zara, can we use it for university? Yes, the curriculum of the university. Absolutely, yes. NAB, thanks for the comment. I'm going to share that. Thanks for the gold course. It's lifetime and useful. I can get more videos and lessons without paying money. Well, after you've paid the initial money, yes, there's more stuff keeps coming, right? Gets better and better. Great. Um, any idea? Let's have a look. Sorry, Nab, I'm going to take you off. Extra, extra curricula. Uh, Tanya says after class activities, which is OK. This is the most common one, right? Extra curricular activities. Extra curricular activities. Julie has that as well. Mona Lisa. Excellent. So extra curricular activities. That would be the most common one. Extracurricular activities. Oh, you can't see. Sorry, let me put it on the right place. Extracurricular activities, because they are in addition to the curricula. So your curricula is one thing, but in addition to that, we have extracurricular activities. You could say after school activities. I mean, that's fine as well. Um, we use both of both of those extracurricular or after school activities talking about um, tests and exams. So we've mentioned this. I'm going to ba 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 the test. We've already mentioned that we can sit the test. You can take the test pass, meaning succeed. Fail, meaning not to pass. Um, and if you fail, you may need to resit or retake the exam, right? So sometimes do again or take again to resit, retake. I've got to redo the exam. You could say redo as well. Um, so that's when you fail or you don't get the result that you wanted. You must you know, must, but you maybe choose to take again. If you're at school, you have to do it again. A nice idiom here is to pass with flying colours. So when you pass the exam really, really well with a really high score, to pass with flying colours. Flying colours, why? No idea. Um, but that means to pass with a really high score. Hopefully, hopefully, you will all pass with flying colours. I hope you will pass the IELTS test with flying colours. Another colloquial word is to flunk. And this is more common in America. But nowadays with Netflix and American series, we've picked up so much, uh, so many Americanisms. To flunk a test is the opposite, is to fail a test, right? To fail a test. So you can pass with flying colours or you can flunk the test. If you flunk the test, you may have to resit the test, okay? Tests and exams. <clears throat> okay, we've got, what else have we got? Enrichment classes, okay, yes. With flying colours, excellent, good. 
to pass with destination. Mm, almost, not destination, but to pass with a distinction, with distinction. I'm going to just help you there, Tet to Ang. To pass with distinction or with a distinction is to pass with flying colours. This is particularly with a university degree, a bachelor's, a master's or a PhD. You can pass with merit, which is very good, or pass with a distinction, which is extremely good, right? Lovely. Thanks for sharing. That's great. Sail through, you can say, is a nice um, idiom as well. To sail through is not so much about the score, but it's to, to go smoothly and successfully, right? So you can say that. Let's share that. I sailed through the test. Means it was easy, really. So it's a similar meaning, uh, Shifali, but it's more about it being easy. So it's not so much about the score, it's more about it was easy. I can sail like the ship very smoothly, sail through. It was easy. I sailed through the test. Um, so let me just add these as well. To pass at university, to pass with merit um, and to pass with a distinction. We normally say ah, but you don't have to. Distinct. <laughs> Come on, to pass with merit, pass with a distinction. Nice expressions, very, very nice. Pass with joy, somebody says, yes. Uh, it was easy to breeze through the exam. Yeah, you can say, uh, probably more common, it was a breeze, right? You can breeze through, yeah, I breeze, mm, yes. I would say I like... It was a breeze. So I sailed through the test. It was a breeze. Okay. Nice. Very, very nice expressions. Okay. Lovely. So let's move on. Just to remind you, I mean, you may be frantically, hello. <laughs> Can I move those away? You may be frantically making notes. Perfect. Good. Make some notes. Also, the notes I'm making, I will give you. You can get them on the website, Keith Speaking Academy, in case you forget. Where is it? Come on. Keith Speaking Academy, in case you forget. So these notes I'll put on the website at the free live lessons bit, and you can collect them later today. Um, I need some time to edit them and to organize them, because as you can see, I'm we're creating this as we go, right? So, um, yeah, just to let you know. But do make notes. It's good. Let's talk about discipline. Because in school, you can't have a school without discipline, right? Um, discipline is strict organisation or following the rules, um, doing things in an organised way. I mean, if we want to check exactly what it means because it's a bit of a complicated one, right? The practice of training people to obey rules or a code of behavior, using punishment or correct to correct disobedience. Discipline, control, order, authority. Wow. Control, order, authority. That's discipline. When we talk about self-discipline, that's self-control right but often the teachers try to discipline the children here you can use this expression right to keep somebody in line our form teacher that's our group teacher or class teacher at school would keep us in line that means control us literally to keep somebody in line or to keep the children in line you can imagine right is to keep them in, in a line. So normally children are all over the place, but if you keep them in a line, then you're controlling them. But it's more idiomatic. When we say, you know, keep your staff in line, it doesn't mean they have to make a line. It means you control them, you discipline them, right? So even in a company, a boss may keep his staff in line or keep her staff in line. Um, 
or keep their staff in line. It just means to, 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 to control them, right? Keep them in order, if you like. It's a very, very nice expression because it's easy to remember, but it's idiomatic, right? Um, so keep control over us. Basically, that's what it means, right? Keep control over us. Keep you in line. The government tries to keep us in line. <laughs> we can say she was a no-nonsense teacher, right? Nonsense means silly, stupid, uh, crazy. No nonsense is the opposite. It means that teacher does not accept bad behavior, silly behavior, crazy behavior. Very strict, basically. So no nonsense just means strict. Not quite strict, but um, no nonsense. Doesn't accept, how should we put this? Doesn't accept uh, nonsense behavior. Let's say, doesn't accept silly behavior. More or less, right? <laughs> no nonsense teacher. Similar to strict. Strict is vroom, right? Keeps strong control. Keeps strong control. Keep them in line. <laughs> our parents would keep us in line. Samir, that's right. Our parents would keep us in line. Mm, yeah, exactly. Especially when we're younger, right? Okay. Good. The opposite of strict is... What is the opposite of strict? Huh. Let me see. Give me any words that you can. The opposite of strict. And again, I'm going to open this up on stream alive. If I just pull you over here. The opposite of strict. What's the opposite of strict? Let's have a look what we've got. The opposite of strict. Soft. Great. Lax, lovely, kind, liberal, permissive. All of these are very, very good. Encouraging, maybe. Lenient, excellent. That's a good one. That's got oh, that's gone up to eight counts. That's great. Uh, loose, Meh. kind of, not really. Loose has a bit of a different meaning. Um, Kind, relaxed, indulgent. That's an interesting one. Indulgent. Good. Like it. Easy going. Excellent. Very, very nice. Yeah, loose has a bit of a strange meaning. I wouldn't say that here. Careless, kind of. Not exactly. Polite, kind of. Indulgent is nice. I like that. Flexible. Very good. That's got a count of nine. Very, very nice. Cool. <laughs> Uh, cool could be uh, smooth. Okay, let's put these together. Indulgent is good. Let's put these down on the uh, on the sheet over here. The opposite of strict is. So I had written, lax, lenient, paid back. But let's put the ones you've got, which are really good, easy going. Um, Liberal, yeah. Why not? A liberal teacher. Um, what else did you have? Indulgent. Indu yeah, they, a teacher who indulges the te the students too much means let's the indulgent means you let people do what they want to do, right? Indulgent. Relaxed. Uh, kind was another one you had. Was great. Flexible, that's right, flexible. All of these are good. Lax, um, my favourites are strict, easygoing. Lax, lenient, laid back.
relaxed. So the, the other words are good, right? They're really good. But thinking about the opposite meaning. So indulgent is great, but it's not exactly the opposite of strict. Not exactly, okay? Chilled. <laughs> chillax. <laughs> chillax is a nice one. I like that, yes. Chillax, right? Getting chilled and chilled together. Chilled plus lax equals chillaxed. <laughs> I like your create creativity. Very, very nice. Um, I'm afraid it doesn't it doesn't exist. Um, so I love the creativity, but no, it doesn't exist. <laughs> Loose, no. So the problem with loose is that it, it also means somebody doesn't have any morals. They don't have strong moral values. Um, it can have a sexual connotation. Um, so it's somebody who, you know, goes with a lot of different people. So it's not the correct word here. Um, I wouldn't say loose. Okay, all of those are good. Any others that popped up? Let's double check. Kind, soft maybe soft yeah i think we've got the main ones we've absolutely got the main ones lovely brilliant let me stop that okay so we've got some nice words around strict and disciplined um let's move on and talk a little bit about rules <laughs> rules are there to be broken i i love these kind of signs in the street where it says no parking and there's a car right no bicycles and there's a bicycle Rules are there to be broken. I can't remember who said that. Was it um, was it Picasso? No, Picasso said, learn the rules like a professional so that you can break them. I think Picasso says something like that. So learn the rules so that you can break them. So become a professional and then you need to be creative and break the rules. Rules are there to be broken, I think, was Boris Johnson. No, just joking. Any politician in the world, I think, could say that. So when we talk about the rules, what do we do with rules? Um, well, we said at the very start of the lesson, right, um, we had a lot of different things we can say. We can say, follow the rules, obey the rules, stick to. Notice the, the preposition, right? Stick to the rules. Um, we also had keep to, which was a nice one. Keep to the rules. I'm going to make this a little bit easier, I think. If I just put this, does that make it easier to see? Let me know. Break is the other one, right? So when you don't, not just follow, but break the rules. Stick to, keep to, follow, break. And all the others like, that we saw, right? Okay. Worth remembering things about the, the rules. Oh, there we go. This is it. Yes, Anarita. Thank you so much. Picasso, learn the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist. That's nice. Very, very nice. Love it. Well, he is Picasso, right? After all. <laughs> An absolute... My, uh, master. <clears throat> so when we talk about rules, we also have to talk about pun punishment. Because teachers in their endeavor to control and discipline students, they will sometimes punish students. Now, the typical punishments in the UK are detention, detention, right, which is where you... Um, stay behind after class. So typically for an hour, you have to stay after school and the teacher gives you a task to do, something to do. Writing lines is the classic one. A really stupid, stupid punishment, right? Writing lines is writing the same line 100 times. Okay. Okay. Writing lines. Why do I say that is a stupid punishment? Well, think about it. A punishment is to stop you doing something, right? To have a negative idea, right? So you don't do it again. 
So by forcing a student to write a hundred times, the student thinks writing is a punishment. Writing is a bad thing. Uh, hello, education, writing, a good thing or a bad thing? Well, of course, it's a good thing. Learning to write and being creative and writing blogs and novels and essays is a basic part of education. So let's try and force the students to think writing is bad. Duh, yeah, clever. Writing lines, the most stupid punishment ever. With all respect to teachers around the world, please stop, stop making students write lines. Okay. Um, suspension, that is where you have to, you cannot go to school for a few days. And that is very strong, right? A suspension is um, is not just for, I don't know, suspension might be for bullying, hitting somebody, maybe smoking um, or selling cigarettes. All of those could be suspension. And even stronger, expulsion, which is where you are kicked out of the school. So these are the typical ones that we have in the UK. I wonder in your country, what are the typical punishments? I wonder. <clears throat> Soreji, insist on the rules. Yeah, I insist on, insist on, I'm going to insist on these rules. I'm going to insist. Yes. Um, I think it would be better Insist on, insist on following the rules. I insist on doing this. You can say, I insist on this rule. But I, I think it's better with the verb, right? <clears throat> to expel Zara, exact, right, to expel, that's good. Um, expulsion, to kick out of school or to expel. Let's put them both there. To kick out of school or to expel from school. Yeah, we also have the same thing. Write lines. Giving bad marks. Uh, writing lines. You've got writing lines. Isolation. Isolation, I think you mean um, the student has to go outside the class, right? Right, stand outside. Caning, yeah. So caning is an example of corporal punishment. Um, corporal, right? Which is basically hitting the student. So things like caning. It's corporal is the corpse, the body. So it's a physical, sorry, I, Irene, Irene. Corporal punishment is some kind of physical punishment, let's say. Caning, um, giving the slipper. That my, at my primary school, the teacher had a slipper, right? <laughs> like a shoe, but a slipper. A vum would hit you on the bum. Um, so caning, giving the slipper, um, giving the ruler or slapping with the ruler. All of these are horrible Corporal punishments. Um, so the ruler, that stick, right? Boom, on the knuckles. Boom, just there. Boom. Oh, horrible. So in, I mean, in some countries now, corporal punishment is forbidden. It's not allowed. Um, I mean, in the UK, several years ago, the government decided hitting children was not a good idea. So corporal punishment was um, banished, was abolished, right? Um, okay, what else have we got? <laughs> in my country, we get a punishment to act like a chicken. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, Taya says, corporal punishment is common in my country, right? Expulsion, right? Okay. Writing 2,000 words, check. Okay, wow. Louisa, complaining to parents. Teachers sometimes make standing up at the, by the end of a lesson, right? Standing up. Standing in the corner is the one we used to have. <clears throat> Soon sunbeams are reflected in your face. Yes, I know. <laughs> I know. That's what all these spots are. 
standing up the whole class. Oh, the whole class has to stand up. Right. Interesting. Slap the hand. Yep. It's a common one. Giving them extra tasks. Banishing, which is expel or uh, expulse. As a teacher, Daniela, hi. As a teacher, I go for calling parents. Right. Yeah. Working with the parents is good. <laughs> Walking like a duck along the corridor. Well, so we've got chickens and we've got ducks, right? My old teacher used to ask me to cross my arms and stand out of the class, right? Standing outside is quite a common one, right? Yes. Okay, nice. Um, good, punishment. Let's move on and, and just finish up with teachers. Um, talking a bit about teachers... I'm thinking in particular about adjectives because you may get questions if you're thinking about IELTS, of course. Questions about describe a teacher, describe a school, describe a class that you had. You're going to talk about teachers probably, right? So teachers, we can talk about the good things, that they are knowledgeable or well-read. So a teacher who knows a lot, um, knowledgeable, well-read, right? These are all adjectives. Knowledgeable, knowledgeable. Notice the stress is on the no. Knowledgeable, 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 knowledgeable. Can you say it? Knowledgeable, nice. I had a very knowledgeable teacher. Nice. I had a very knowledgeable teacher. She was very well read. Um, so somebody who reads a lot, right? Someone who reads a lot. Um, strict, we've talked about. A nice expression similar to strict is tough but fair. Tough, strict, but fair. Tough but fair. It's got the f, f, f. T -f -b -f. <laughs> tough but fair often the but we just say but there's no t but fair watch my mouth tough but fair tough but fair this is how you work on pronunciation right break it down into little pieces T tough but Fair, tough but fair. And then build it up, make a sentence. I had a teacher, she was well read and she was tough but fair. And then you're building your confidence as a speaker, right? Tough but fair. Um, you may want to say the opposite, not strict but easygoing. We've learned easygoing, lax, lenient, relaxed indulgent indulgent nurturing right nurturing the ner is the stress nurturing it's a ch notice not a t ch nurturing nurturing my teacher was very nurturing okay nurturing to nurture is to basically to encourage encouraging um encouraging the other day i just noticed something watch this right watch watch right you see what happens the auto correct the other day um in the sometimes in the gold course when a student gets the seven or the eight that they want. We have a meeting together in the Zoom, in Zoom, and we get together and the student who passed the exam shares their experience. And we had a, a student the, the other day who was telling us about the computer exam. And it's interesting because I asked, well, which is better for you, the computer test or the written test? And they said, the computer test is fine but just be careful of one thing, is that at home 
you get so used to the autocorrect, the autocorrect, right? Where you're where you write a, a study, you, you write something and you just don't think about it. And you go, oh, 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 yeah. And then you need to change it. You get so used to the autocorrect in the test, there is no autocorrect. So you forget to check your spelling and you become very lax and relaxed with spelling and you make a lot of spelling mistakes. And you don't realize because you're so used to just typing and the autocorrect telling you mistakes. But of course, in IELTS computer test, there's no autocorrect. So you have to be really careful when you're writing your test in IELTS because your mind is so used to the autocorrect. Very interesting insight. I thought that was interesting. And I'm the same. I, I, my spelling is getting worse because I'm so used to the computer telling me if I make a mistake. Um, slightly negative things for a teacher. Ill-prepared, ill-prepared, ill, bad, badly prepared. Um, is one. Rambling is another, which is talking too much without a goal, <laughs> right? Sometimes teachers, have you noticed that? I am guilty sometimes. Teachers ramble. They go on and on and on and on. And students are going, oh, I've got it. I've got it. Shut up move on. <laughs> so sometimes teachers are rambling, right? Um, very interesting. Okay. Those are different uh, adjectives we could use about teachers, right? Talk about a lazy teacher. Absolutely. <laughs> Inept. Inept is a good one, right? Inept just means not competent. Not, not competent, not good, right? Not good. Useless, right? Yeah, Missy. Some teachers are inept, I guess. Uh, what about a well-educated teacher? Knowledgeable, well-read, well-educated, all of those, yep. Great. Fode, thank you. Very nice to see you here as well. Oh, this is interesting, Hatties. Teachers always care about smart students and do not care about others. Yeah. Um, so an adjective for that um, is, oh, it's it's all about equality, being fair, unfair, maybe. Um, uh, trying to think of something for that particularly. They care about the smart students. They don't care about the other students. They're unfair. They're... Let me think. Nothing comes to mind. Somebody will surely help. Inspiring. Professional. Good one, Anna. Absolutely. Hand queen. I can't see your answer. There are so many things going through. It's difficult to see all your, all your comments. So I apologize if I miss your comments. Um, unfair. Yeah. Will the stream be saved? Yes, it is. It's saved on YouTube and the Facebook page. You can come back anytime and watch it. Sure discriminating ah okay and biased yeah so discriminating and biased yeah biased is good sam discrimination is the is the noun so you're talking about discrimination but discriminating would be the adjective to describe that picture right that picture that teacher <laughs> Tackless, maybe. Yep. Neglecting is also good in that case. Neglecting. Favoritism. Yes, that's good. Favoritism. Favoritism is the noun, right? Um, do we have an adjective? Favoritist? No, we don't, do we? No. Well, uh, what I would say then is I would say, let's take Akin Toller's idea. Let's say guilty of... Favor, favor. You see, autocorrect. <laughs> Guilty of favoritism. I had a teacher. She was easygoing, but she was guilty of favoritism. That's nice. Thank you so much, everybody. That's helped 
get some nice vocabulary that I was struggling with. with. Okay. Inclusivity matters, Maddy. Totally agree. Totally, totally agree. Prejudiced, discriminating is another. Yeah, they're prejudiced also. These are all good words. Excellent. Guys, let's let's uh, let's switch and let's move on. We've talked so far a lot about all of this stuff, right? Come over here. Vocabulary, schools, teachers. Um, I'm going to move on because, not only because it's, it's already 11 o'clock. I want to talk about learning, right? Um, a little bit. And I think this might be interesting for the teachers and students, for all of you. Um, talking about learning. So I'm going to present something to you. Let me show you a picture, okay? And I will be very impressed if anybody can tell me the name of this, okay? This is a very, very famous pyramid, very famous diagram. But if you can tell me the name, I'll give you the uh, round of applause. Let me show you this picture first. Of course, I forgot the names on the top. <laughs> there you go. Have a look at this, right? Too late to hide it, Keith. Ba -ba 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 -ba. This is a very, very famous pyramid, right? <clears throat> and it's the pyramid of learning. So these are different ways that we can learn. At the bottom, okay, skill levels, yep. At the bottom, basically, the bottom level is the basic level of learning. And as you move up the pyramid, your learning skills get better and better. And the not only the ability that you have, but the ability you need is higher, right? So at the bottom, it's basic learning. At the top, it's deep learning. So at the bottom, remembering things, just remembering facts, memorizing, that's basic learning, right? Understanding, no, number two, is when you can actually explain something and you it's clear that you understand it. Applying is a much deeper level of learning where you're using something you've learned or understood and you're using it in a different situation. Um, Going higher, when you anal analyze something, is you're connecting the ideas. You're maybe breaking it down and then trying to connect the ideas. Evaluate is here where you're maybe debating, looking at the pros and the cons, um, deciding if it's good or bad, and you can defend or attack something. And at the very top is create, is where you create something new. OK, um, all of this, it's it's not Maslow, Pyramid of Maslow. No, it's not Maslow. Good guess. Good guess. It's actually, um, as some of you said, Huang Tang said, it's Bloom's Taxonomy. OK, it's all about the levels of learning. Exactly. Exactly what you've said. Um, Loella said Bloom's Taxonomy. Um, basically, it is Fatima, higher order skills and lower order skills. OK, excellent. So this, and the name's at the top there, I'd forgot, it's called Bloom's Taxonomy. <clears throat> okay. Um, so the reason I show you this is to just explain something about vocabulary and about learning. And also you can use this in your IELTS test, right, as well. So Bloom's Taxonomy, and I've taken this from Commons Wiki Wikimedia, um, all credit to Commons Wikimedia for letting me share it. Basically, let me show you, right? These are the levels that you've got. The different kind of activity you may do at the different levels. So at the very bottom level is remember, right? So when you're remembering something, maybe you memorize a word list. That's very basic learning, right? It's good. And as, a, as an English student, you need to memorize words, but it's very basic. As you move up, if you can explain the meaning of a word, that's a bit deeper. 
if you can then try to use a new word or a new idiom let's say try to use a new word I don't know why I put idiom try to use a new word applying that's going to make your learning deeper right a lot of people get confused a lot of people think that memorizing is learning and that applying is different no memorizing and applying are learning they're part of the learning process right so you need to memorize explain and apply all part of the learning process but that's not enough you need to send then to start analyzing maybe you compare this idiom or this word to another word right you say ah that's a similar word prejudice it's a bit like favoritism or biased it's a similar thing but there's a nuance that's a bit different you're analyzing and then if you go higher you start to evaluate for example maybe you you're in a debate you're debating in english and you're debating an idea you're defending or attacking you're evaluating ideas and create maybe writing a blog post you're creating you're using the word the idioms the ideas and you're creating all of this is deeper learning a lot of students are stuck here at the bottom right a lot of students are only doing the remember and that's it they're just remembering word lists and it's not enough you really need to be understanding and applying right to be doing all of that and analyzing evaluating and creating because only when you do all of it will you learn deeply <clears throat> this is for students and teachers right think about it as a teacher what activities are you giving your students to learn hmm hmm okay <clears throat> okay likewise let me just share with you then a similar thing useful phrases um if you want to talk about this if maybe there's a question in IELTS speaking about you know did you enjoy learning at school you can talk about remembering well we to learn by heart is to memorize to learn by heart yeah at school we had to learn things by heart and it was so difficult for me to learn by heart talking about understanding to get it I get it I understand talk about apply to have a go to have a go is to try so I learned a word and now I'm going to have a go and try and use it in a conversation analyze you could say to break down so when you're looking at an idiom to kick the bucket you can break it down to kick to kick a bucket is something where you put water and if the bucket falls over the water comes out to kick the bucket all together is to die but you can break down the word right or break down the idea I do that with pronunciation we break down the word right evaluate to weigh up to weigh up is to to evaluate right is to look at the good and the bad to weigh up to balance to evaluate to create we can say to think out of the box right think out of the box is to think in a different way so all of these are useful phrases you can use for different levels of learning this is a lot I understand this is quite difficult and it's a lot of information let me just give you a very simple example right down here I'm going to play something and I want you to listen and fill in the gaps with one word and it's taking these words we've just looked at okay have a look to the moon I thought we should understand before we memorize 
this is the other thing, right? Um, not necessarily. No, not necessarily. Some people do need to understand before they memorize. But I learned Chinese memorizing lots of words. I had no idea what they meant. But I memorized the sound. I memorized the word. And then later I learned the meaning. Um, so it doesn't have to be in a, in a line. And also it can be mixed in. The whole learning process is mixed in. I know it looks like it's a line going up, but it's more like it's more like this. <laughs> it goes up and down and all over. Great question though to the moon. Salana, that's mine stuck in understanding level. It's time to move up, Salana. It's time to move up. Stop applying, etc. Okay. Daniyar, Daniyar, welcome from Kazakhstan. Great. Teaching English all the time. Well done. It's based on Maslow's pyramid. Similar idea that it's a pyramid, yes, to weigh up the pros and cons. Oh, Leila, thank you so much for your comment. Good. So you're having a go. <clears throat> Irini says, learn. Daniela says, learning, go. Let me move it up. I'm going to give you a bit of a, a bit of music while we're going. Mustafa. Mm, nice, Anna. Mm, maybe. <laughs> Me too. Good. Um, what I'll do, listen and check your answers. Okay, let's go. At school, I had a teacher who just used to make us learn everything by heart. I didn't enjoy that much, but sometimes we had to have a go at using those ideas in a debate. And I felt that was much more beneficial. You know, weighing up other people's ideas and thinking out of the box. I found that really useful. Some of your answers are good, maybe different from the listening. Let me tell you, play it one more time. At school, I had a teacher who just used to make us learn everything by heart. I didn't enjoy that much, but sometimes we had to have a go at using those ideas in a debate. And I felt that was much more beneficial. You know, weighing up other people's ideas and thinking out of the box. I found that really useful. Sam, nice, excellent, very, very good. Shifali, excellent. Yang Ting Ye, nice. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. I didn't enjoy it that much. Okay, perfect. Good. Thank you. Somebody noticed that. So here were the answers. At school, I had a teacher who just used to make us learn everything by heart. <clears throat> yeah. It has to be learned. You can't say, 
understand by heart? No, no, no. Know by heart? No. Learn by heart, right? To memorize, learn by heart. We, I didn't enjoy, I didn't enjoy that much. I didn't enjoy it that much. But sometimes we had to have a go, try, at using those ideas in a debate, yeah, in a debate. You could say other things, right? Um, but in this listening, it was debate. You know, weighing up other people's ideas. So evaluating to weigh up. Is it good? Is it bad? Evaluating and thinking out of the box. I found that really useful. Thinking out of the box. Excellent. Good. Well done. That's it. Very, very nice. I'm going to move swiftly on because... We've been looking at learning. Um, a bit heavy, I know. This sunrise is more beautiful than any sunset. <laughs> what? Um, learning. A bit heavy, I know, but maybe useful for, for some of you. And it's all good vocabulary, right? Let's move on. What comes after learning? Technology and education. Okay. Um, I'm going to share with you some ideas here. And then let's switch. Let me come back here. What is the impact of technology on education? Okay, it's a good question and it's a common question. What is the impact of technology on education? Here are some ideas and phrases, right? Um, a good or positive impact is we have more access to Notice the collocation. We have more access to resources and information worldwide, right? Which is absolutely true because what do we have? We've got Google, right? Google is something that accesses things worldwide, right? Technology. We can access anything. We can access uh, learning, we can find anything. Free IELTS courses. <laughs> Look at that. You can access free IELTS. You can get your information anywhere, anywhere in the world. So learning, technology, positive. You have tech, sorry, you have more access to resources and information. Technology can create shortcuts. A shortcut is to a way to do things more quickly, right? A way to do things more quickly. Technology can create shortcuts. We can do things more quickly with technology. But be careful, right? Um, be careful. So many of you will be familiar with this new technology, right, that, that is, is coming out. This new technology, I'm going to share it with you here. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. Chat GPT. Now, you can, if you want, type in, give me an answer. Give me an answer um, of two to three sentences. Can I make this bigger? Uh, for this IELTS speaking question. Give me an answer to two or three sentences for this IELTS speaking question. I'm going to take this up here. Um, did you enjoy school as a child? So you could, as a student, you could go into um, ChatGPT, right? And you could come in and you could just say, okay, shortcut <laughs> as an AI language model, I cannot answer this question on personal experience, but I can say 
Many students enjoy school because they learn new things, make friends, participate in extracurricular activities. Do you remember extracurricular activities? Um, however, some may find certain subjects or aspects of school challenging or unenjoyable. So you can take technology like ChatGPT and find answers and memorize the answer. But there's a problem, right? There's a big, big problem with that because do you remember what we just talked about? <laughs> do you remember you remember this, right? Bloom's taxonomy, memorizing an answer is the lowest level of learning, right? Just memorizing a, the, the answer is just remembering. You will never get a band seven or eight if your learning is at the low level. OK, so technology can create shortcuts. Da, 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 da. But be really careful because you want to make sure your learning is deep learning, right? Don't just end up memorizing words, memorizing answers. You will never succeed in learning English, right? You need to understand, apply, evaluate, create move up the learning pyramid <laughs> okay coming back so we've got an example of chat gbt there right um, possibly you can learn more quickly maybe personalized learning is a big thing nowadays so technology can personalize your learning like when you study on an app and it, it adjusts the content the flashcard apps adjust the content to your level it can motivate young people, right? Motivate young people, technology. Young students love a bit of technology. It can unleash our creativity. Okay, interesting expressions. Let me put all of these together. So these are things we can talk about with the good or positive impact, but there is a bad or negative impact. And that may be it can put older people off, right? Meaning it can discourage them. Because if they don't understand the technology and don't know how to use it, it can be frustrating. It can discourage them. It can put, put older people off. To put off means to discourage in this context. I know put off has different meanings, but here it's to discourage. It can be frustrating. Technology can fail. How many times have I had my microphone not work? Technology doesn't work. It can be frustrating, right? <laughs> KK says, I think ChatGPT can create something. Yes. But then chat GPT is going up the learning ladder, not you. You need to go up the learning ladder. Uh, great. Education shouldn't be technology driven. Zin, Harb, I agree so much. Education and technology have to work together in a cycle. They have to push each other. Yeah, don't just use it for its sake. Don't just jump on the latest bandwagon. Yes. It can take individuals' jobs such as a teacher. Maybe, maybe not. Again, I don't think it's one or the other. I think technology works together with people and teachers to improve learning outcomes. Um, will they take our jobs? Mm, don't know. Depends on the teacher, right? <laughs> Chamus, too much fake information on the internet. That's right. So technology, it's difficult, right? Sometimes it can be distracting as well. That's a nice one. Let's add that. It can be distracting. Doesn't have any tech, any creativity. Doesn't need to, I guess. What does discourage mean? It means the opposite of 
encourage. To encourage is to say, yes, you can do it. Yes, you can do it. To discourage is the opposite. It's to say, no, you can't do it. You're rubbish. You can't do it. Make students lazy. They take ready homework instead of doing right. So they're not learning. If you're not doing, you're not learning. So technology, maybe it can be dangerous. It can be good. It can be bad, right? Um, it depends on the situation. So I guess we have to think now and again, we have to think, do we really want to throw out <laughs> the computer or not? We have to see, don't we? Okay, now then. I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. We've been looking at technology and education. Just because of the time, I noticed the time. I'm going to move on to a part two model answer. Um, part two has some questions about education. In fact, part one and two and three. But today, let's have a look at part two, just focusing on a part two answer. Okay. We're going to listen to a person. So this is a listening task. Watch and listen. This person talk about their first day at school. And the question is, what was the best part of the day? Okay. What was the best part of the day? <clears throat> Before we listen, just give me a thumbs up to say that you're ready so that I know you're ready to listen. All right. So when you're ready, just give me a thumbs up. Great. I love the comments. The comments are really, really good. I'm just going to wait for you a moment. Tum, 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 tum. Just give me a thumbs up when you're ready. Okay. Got some thumbs ups. Okay. I think you're ready. So the question is, Watch this person talk about their first day at school. What was the best part of the day? Ready? Okay, let me just get the video ready. Here we go. So I actually went to a number of different schools as a child. Um, I'm going to tell you about the second school I went to. So the first day, and I remember at my second school, um, was quite interesting. I moved there when I was six. I think I must have been about six or seven. Um, my mother wasn't, well, she hadn't been very happy with me, with the previous school, I should say. Um, so she insisted that we change. I remember on the first day turning up, or more accurately, my parents dropped me off and they were quite um, anxious and apprehensive as it was my first day at school. Um, and me too, I was a bit nervous. Um, I had no idea what was in store for me. Um, and I just remember walking in and thinking it was so big. Um, I was overwhelmed by the size of everything. The playground, the classrooms, the assembly hall just seemed gigantic and everything was a bit of a blur. It just happened so quickly but I can still recall quite vividly going into the first classroom with my first teacher who appeared to be a very calm, very calm and thoughtful lady, um, very much in control. She seemed to be kind of tough and fair I would say. And she introduced me to the whole class, which was great because it really made me feel at home. And although I was a bit fidgety, um, this helped me relax and settle in quite well. Um, I also remember the first playtime, the break, right? When we went out into the playground, there was this great big climbing frame and an obstacle course. And I just found it so easy to make friends and we played together. And I felt great. I think, you know, talking about my feelings of the whole day, I was really comfortable um, and I felt quite 
relaxed at the end of the day. Um, and I thought, yeah, this is a school, it's going to be easy for me to fit in. And as it turns out, it was. I really, really liked that school. I enjoyed it a lot. Right. Interesting answer, right? Talking about the first day at school. Um, so the question, the original question was, what was the best part of the day? What do you think? Let's see what you guys say. <clears throat> Syed, you're late, but you're here. Good. Uh, let's see. Layla says playtime. What was the best part of the day? Break, playtime, break, break time, making friends, right? break, break time, making friends. Kieran, thank you so much for that. Recess, very American, but good. That's the American word, yeah. Break time in Britain. Okay. Mohammed, good. Very, very good. I like that, yes. Ah, easy to fit in, maybe. The best part of the day and the morning, maybe, yes. His first playtime, making new friends. Also, Sam, yeah. Whoops, where are you? Come back. Okay. Aha, uh -huh. the teacher introduced you. Playing at the playground, and your teacher introduced you. So, yeah. Um, I think that there are two. And this is very, very difficult. Probably the best part of the day was the playtime and making friends, right? If we have to choose one, right? I would say that's it. Playtime and making friends. That said, I also think the best part of the day was the teacher introducing me to other students. I think that was that was also a very good part of the day. So probably the first one I think is the playtime. That was clearly making friends and I felt that I could fit in. Um, but definitely the teacher introducing him was, was very important and made him feel, made me feel um, welcome, right? That's the kind of nurturing, encouraging teacher that really helped me. It's a true story. I mean, this was absolutely true for me. It was um, that, I mean, imagine I'm 55. I still remember that day like it was yesterday. Um, it had a very big impression on me. I was only six at the time or seven, I think. Yeah, no, I was six, I think. Yeah. I don't remember the whole day, but I remember the climbing frame, the obstacle course, making friends. That teacher had a big influence on me. Maybe that's why I am like I am. <laughs> okay, good. Now, next question, okay, is we're going to watch again and I want you to note any useful phrases and collocations, okay? Collocations and phrases because words are good, but if you can learn two or three words together, it's better for your learning and your fluency, okay? So don't just learn one word, learn the collocations together. Um, great, let's listen again and just make a note. You can make a note in the chat as we're going along. All right, here we go. Let's do it. Let me just find it. <laughs> Where are you? Here we are. Great, let's do it. 
So I actually went to a number of different schools as a child. Um, I'm going to tell you about the second school I went to. So the first day, and I remember at my second school, um, was quite interesting. I moved there when I was six. I think I must have been about six or seven. Um, my mother wasn't, well, she hadn't been very happy with me, with the previous school, I should say. Um, so she insisted that we change. I remember on the first day turning up, or more accurately, my parents dropped me off, and they were quite um, anxious and apprehensive as it was my first day at school. Um, and me too, I was a bit nervous. Um, I had no idea what was in store for me. Um, and I just remember walking in and thinking it was so big. Um, I was overwhelmed by the size of everything, the playground, the classrooms, the assembly hall, just seemed gigantic. And everything was a bit of a blur. It just happened so quickly. But I can still recall quite vividly going into the first classroom with my first teacher, who appeared to be a very calm, very calm and thoughtful lady, um, very much in control. She seemed to be kind of tough and fair, I would say. And she introduced me to the whole class, which was great because it really made me feel at home. And although I was a bit fidgety, um, this helped me relax and settle in quite well. Um, I also remember the first playtime, the break, right? When we went out into the playground, there was this great big climbing frame and an obstacle course. And I just found it so easy to make friends and we played together. And I felt great. I think, you know, talking about my feelings of the whole day, I was really comfortable um, and I felt quite relaxed at the end of the day. Um, and I thought, yeah, this is a school. It's going to be easy for me to fit in. And as it turns out, it was. I really, really liked that school. I enjoyed it a lot. Excellent. <clears throat> nice. Um, great. Excellent. Not me. Excellent. Your comments are coming through. Absolutely great. Just before I do the comments, somebody asked me, what is an obstacle course? Um, in case you don't know, these are obstacle courses, right? Obstacles are things you have to go over, like a tunnel or a rope or things like that. They're, they're different fun things you have to get over and do. These are obstacle courses. Okay, That school had an obstacle course in the playground. How good is that? <laughs> Amazing. So um, you've come up, well, lots of stuff. Let me just come back. Um, we had just a few things drop off. Um, obstacle course was up there. I just thinking in. We've got was in store to be in store. Making friends. A bit of a blur. Good. Vividly. Very good. Yeah. Remember vividly. Um, at the end of the day. During break time. Oh, you've gone. Where has it gone? You've, it's moving too fast. <laughs> Slow down. Uh, play in the playground. Oh, it's moving too fast. Slow down. What's it doing? Stop. Quite relaxed. I still recall quite vividly. Kind of tough and fair. Fit in. Uh, we've got a, a few here. We've got, she insisted, dropped me off. I was a bit nervous, settling quite well. All of these are great. Anything else? It turns out, it turn out, it turns out. Relax and settle in was another one. Yeah, all of these are great, really good. Turns out, yeah, with the S, well done. Great. I'm struggling to get the, the comments. They're too fast. OK, I think the easiest way will be for me to move across here. Let's just go through together. This is what I said. So actually, I went to a number of different schools, a number of, I guess, a number of 
is, is quite good. A number, when you want to say a few or several, a number of. I'm going to tell you about a good way to start your part two answer, right? Quite interesting, somebody said. Good. The use of adverbs really boosts your vocabulary. Dead easy, really easy, but good. Um, my mother wasn't, she hadn't been happy with the previous school. So talking about the school before, the previous school is good. Um, to turn up, right? Turning up, which means to appear. But actually, I didn't turn up because my parents took me. Um, so more, I say more accurately, my parents dropped me off. So to drop me off, boom, <laughs> you know, they took me to school. Anxious and apprehensive, both meaning nervous, right? A bit nervous or worried. Nervous. I think worried is probably a better word. Appre apprehensive and anxious at more is more worried, I think. They were worried. As it was my first day at school. Me too. I was a bit nervous. A bit nervous is a good, very, very colloquial. I had no idea. Have no idea, right? I don't know. I have no idea. What was in store for me? Waiting for me. Um, when I began my new job, I had no idea what was in store for me. When I got married, I had no idea what was in store for me. <laughs> when we had our first child, I had no idea what was in store for me. What was waiting? What was coming to me in the future, right? Same at school. Lovely expression. Um, I just remember walking in. I was overwhelmed. So overwhelmed is when there's, it's a very strong emotional feeling that too much is happening, right? A feeling that everything is too much. There's probably a, an easier way of explaining that. Let's see what. Overwhelmed, swamp, submerge, bury, delulge. Yeah, but that's not quite what we mean. Overwhelmed, bury down a huge mass of something, especially water. Yeah, but we're talking more emotionally here, that you're emotionally overwhelmed. A feeling that everything is too much. Um, everything seemed gigantic. Very, very big, right? It's a nice word to use, gigantic. And everything was a bit of a blur. So a bit of a blur. Blur is just when it's not clear, right? Um, do you know on a lot of people do a blurred background? When you're on a Zoom call, you can blur your background. Then that's it's a blur. It just happened so quickly. I can still recall quite vividly to remember clearly So recall vivid, vividly, again, that use of um, adjectives is, sorry, that use of adverbs is really helping your, your vocabulary. A thoughtful lady, very much in control, to be in control. Tough and fair, we looked at earlier, right? Um, she introduced me to class. It made me feel at home, to feel comfortable, feel at home, feel comfortable. I was a bit fidgety. So fidgety is nervous and you're moving. So fidgety, maybe I can show if I put my whole body here. Fidgety is when your body is moving, right? You're a bit... And you're kind of like... Ooh. And, and you just... You, you, you can't stop moving. You're just fidgety. Is your fidgety. You're, you're moving your body nervously basically <laughs> fidgety so i was fidgety but she helped me relax so it's fidgety um moving your body nervously that's fidgety fidgety is the adjective and it's when 
you're moving your body nervously. She helped me to settle in. That is to, to, to settle in. To settle means to calm down. To settle in means to feel at home, right? Feel comfortable. Feel comfortable in a new place. So you can settle in to a new house. You can settle into a new city when you arrive. You can settle into a new school. You feel comfortable in a new place. Um, the playground, the area where you play, climbing frame, what you've got, right? Obstacle course we talked about. Depends on the school, what you've got. Um, I think talking about my feelings, talking about my feelings, da, da, da. I felt relaxed. It's going to be easy to fit in. So to fit in is to, to feel comfortable in a new place. <laughs> it's the same as the other one, right? To fit in, to feel comfortable and to feel, to feel a sense of belonging is better, right? To fit in. When you move to a new school, you want to fit in. You want to feel you belong in that place. If you move to a new neighborhood, it's nice to fit in. As it turns out, so to turn out is the, the result or in the end. Um, as it turns out or in the end, as it turns out, the end result, let's say the end result was da, 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 da. as it turns out the end result was da, 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 da. the end result was it was it was uh, a good place it easy to fit in I like that school I enjoyed it a lot great I mean you'll notice right the some of the language there's some nice vocabulary there's different grammatical tenses but some of the language is very simple, right? It's not complicated. You really want to be careful in IELTS speaking to have a mix of simple and complex language. If you try to have lots of complex language, you will block, you'll get nervous, your fluency will go down, and it's not natural. Natural English is some complex and some simple. Just have both, right? Don't try too hard. <laughs> That's my advice for you. Okay, excellent, good. Great, just seeing any other comments coming in. The verb from to fidget. Yes, to fidget, exactly. To fidget around is to, to be moving nervously. Exactly, yes. Roma says a uh, climbing frame or monkey bars. Yeah, very similar. The climbing frame, you can go up. The monkey bars, you just swing across. It's, it's very similar things, yes. Got it. Excellent. Good. George, if I use those collocations, can native speakers understand it? Of course they can. That is because whenever I use them, they want me to explain what I want to mean in paraphrasing ways. Well, it depends on the context. Um, it depends which ones you're talking about. If you're talking about an idiom and somebody asks you to explain, it may be it's not the right idiom or it's not exactly the right idiom for the right context. Okay. Um, so you may find that you're trying a new idiom, which is great. But if a native speaker says, what do you mean? Then probably your idiom is not quite right, which is fine. You can explain and they can say, ah, OK, that's fine. Context is really important. Um, but absolutely, you you should be using all of these collocations and phrases is, is natural English. Absolutely. But very good question, George. Good. Thank you. Great. Okay, brilliant. Good. Guys, I'm going to, while you're just typing, I'm going to move on because we've looked at the part two model answer and what's coming next. 
Kahoot, we're going to finish up. I've just noticed the time is very, very late. Thank you for staying with me. I realize this has become a long session, but we're going to have just five or 10 minutes to finish reviewing some of the vocabulary with the game Kahoot. If you don't know the game, if you're new, um, I'll show you what to do. Basically, stay with me here, but you need to open another tab and go to kahoot.it. I've lost my tab. Where is it? Come on. Go to, to this one. Go to kahoot.it and we're going to play the game. Okay, let's go there now. I'm just going to log in. I pray that it works. <laughs> Last time it wasn't working so well. Education, that's the one. Start the game. Start. So you go to kahoot.it, put in your name and the PIN number. And here's the PIN. Da, 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 da. Oh, I need to make this smaller, of course. Da, 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 da. So the PIN is 4795080. And uh, Burns, I know you're out there. If you could just share the PIN as well, that would be great. Thank you. Oh, you've done it already. Star, well done. So 4795080. And there you can join us. Just put your name in. You can use a real name or a makeup name. It's fine. And we will, I'll just give you a few minutes to get in and then we'll start playing. Huda, I've seen your notice about the email. I haven't seen it yet, Huda, but let me go back and check. I will go and check. Priscilla, uh, you're very happy today. Great, good. So I'll just give you a second for all of you to join in. How many have we got? 90, 97. <laughs> okay, just as that's uh, organizing itself, we'll just get ready over here. So basically what's going to happen is I'm going to ask you four qu four questions. For each question, you have like here a choice. You choose A, B, C or D. It's actually a color. I'll read the question and then you can see the answers um, on your screen. Just choose the right one. I'll read out the answers as well. There is an app. So if you've got a mobile phone, you can get the app on Kahoot and play directly. Often that's a bit easier. Okay. Okie dokie, let's, um, let's get ready. Ready when you are. Yes, Grace, I'm ready. If you're ready. <laughs> Here we go. We've got 150 people. I think that's great. If you can't get in, don't worry. You can give your answer in the chat. Here we go. We're going to start. First question. Education. If I fail my, my exam, I will have to blank it. Restand, remake, resit, rewalk. If I fail my exam, I will have to blank it. Restand, remake, resit, or rewalk. So you've got 30 seconds for each question. 30 seconds to answer. There's only one correct answer. Oh, that was interesting, okay. Um, 26 people said re-stand. Oh dear, no. It's re-sit is the correct answer to re-sit. Um, Restand? No, you doesn't exist. Remake? No. Rewalk? No. The other alternatives are retake or redo, but resit 
resit, excuse me, is the correct answer. So that's, oh, oh, that's interesting. That was a tough question, right? Next one. Well, let's see how the leaderboard is. Um, who got it right? Powell B, Moan, Mia? Great. You three are at the top. You were the fastest people. Question two. She passed her test with blank colors. Beautiful, flying, running, rainbow. <laughs> she passed her test with blank colors. Beautiful, flying, running, or rainbow. Do you remember this one? Well done, Sam. Hopefully, we'll get a lot more good answers here. Yeah, well done. It's flying colors. To pass with flying colors is to pass really well, get a very high score. So hopefully, in your IELTS test, you will pass with flying colors. Nice. Let's see how the uh, scoreboard is. Oh, things have moved. Mogad has moved right up to the top. And the rest of you have all moved down like a ladder. <clears throat> Question three. Which is the odd one out? Which one is different? Laid back, lax, lenient, no nonsense. So which one is different? Or which one is the odd one out? Laid back, lax, lenient, or no nonsense? <clears throat> Five seconds. Oh, that's interesting. It was a uh, 27 and 27 um, between lax and no nonsense. Well, laid back means relaxed. Lax means relaxed and lenient means relaxed. No nonsense means much stricter, right? You don't accept silly behavior. So here, no nonsense clearly has a different meaning. The other three are all the same. Okay, scoreboard. Things have moved again. Moan has stolen into first place. Mia has crept into second. And CR has moved into third. Grace, you're the highest climber. Let's move on to the final question. All this new technology puts me blank learning. Off, out, away, in. All this new technology puts me blank learning. Off, out, away, in. Puts me off, puts me out, puts me away, puts me in. And here it's a negative thing, right? Looking at the expression on the man's face. Right. The answer here was off. It puts me off learning. I see 23 of you said in. Puts me in learning. It puts me in learning. I don't think we would say puts me in something. Um, I, I can see what you're thinking, that you think technology attracts you into learning, right? I guess I needed to make it clearer that this was the technology. I don't like it and it makes me it discourages me from learning. It puts me off, means it discourages me. I don't like it. Okay, let's have a look at the final score. The podium. Number three, Grace, well done. Luna moved into second. And number one? Mia, you crept in there. Well done you, Mia at the top. Oh, excellent. Well done. Well done, Mia. Very, very nice. <laughs> very pleased to see you winning. Nice. Well, excellent. Well done, all of you. Really, really good job. Nice to see you all making great progress, picking up and learning new things from the lesson. Remember, you can always go back and watch the lesson again. This is recorded on YouTube and the Facebook page. You can go back there anytime and watch it. Um, if you want to get the PDF, all the notes, 
later today or tomorrow, if you go to the, the website, go to the Keith Speaking Academy website. Hang on a moment. Let me get you in, uh, in sight. Aha. One moment. <laughs> I'm trying to find me uh, my website. Website's gone. That's interesting. Where's the website gone? Ha. Huh. It's disappeared altogether. Okay, there it is. Excuse me. Um, if you want to get the, the the PDF, just go to the website keyspeakingacademy.com. Go to the free live lessons and you'll be able to download the PDF. You just have to put in your name and your email and you can get that. Um, this is last month, daily routines, but we will upload this today and later today you can go and find that um, and download the PDF and start studying, practicing. Remember the Bloom Taxonomy, the learning pyramid, so that you're not just memorizing and understanding, you're applying, right? Practice, practice, start applying. Go and find somebody to speak with and practice using it. So important. Um, great. So today, it's been a long session. I mean, thank you all of you for staying here so long. I realize it's not easy to stay for two hours. So well done, all of you. Today, we've been looking at vocabulary of schools and teachers. We've looked at curricula. We've looked at uh, curriculum in the singular. Uh, we've looked at discipline, being strict and lax, adjectives for teachers. We've talked about learning and the different levels of learning from memorizing to being creative. And as a student, how you should try to move up to get deeper learning. Okay. We've talked about technology, throwing the uh, computer away, the good and the bad, the positive and negative impact of technology. We had that model answer about your first day at school, my first day at school, I should say. Um, and then we went on to have Kahoot. So listen, thank you so much for joining me. It's been great fun as always. Remember, we have these lessons um, once a month, right? So da, 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 it's going to be the first Thursday of each month, which means the next one is going to be May the 4th. May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. May the 4th will be our next live lesson on YouTube. If you want more live lessons, like next week and the week after, come and join the Gold Course. On the Gold Course, we have two extra live lessons next week and the week after, every month forever. <laughs> well, forever. But it goes on and on. So you pay once, but then you get access to the live lessons every month, two extra live lessons, as well as the whole course. You can find out about that if you go to the Keith Speaking Academy. Um, just click on the online courses button and you can find out about the course. And if it's right for you, you know, you can join straight away and uh, join us there. So that's it. Excellent. If you're on YouTube, by the way, do remember you can subscribe, turn on notifications, find out about new live lessons once a month. And every Saturday, I do a short video to give you extra language for English learning, speaking, and for IELTS. Great. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> lovely to see you here. You're very, very welcome. Thank you very much. Fatima says, thanks a lot. It was fantastic. Great. Great. After lesson will be Zoom meeting. In the gold course, yes. But in this one, no, there's no Zoom meeting. But we do that in the gold course. After the live lessons, we have a Zoom meeting together. Okay, great. Thank you so much, all of you, for joining me. Um, I'll leave you with some interesting music um, to, um, well, to carry on your day, whether it's morning, afternoon, or evening. Have a lovely day. Keep practicing. Move up the learning pyramid. And I'll see you next time. All the best. Bye-bye.
nice to see you, Vladimir. You too, Jenny. Love the hearts, Maddie. Thank you. You're welcome, Mattis, all the time. Well done. That's it. Take care, my friends. See you next time. Bye-bye.